Hi everyone, my name is Holly Benson and I'm a senior at Westchester University in Westchester, Pennsylvania. I'm an English writings major and the title of my paper is Anti-Narrativity and Irreality in Synecdoche, New York. Synecdoche, New York is a film directed by Charlie Kaufman in 2008. The film centers around theater director Caden Cotard, who creates a play which represents his own life. Synecdoche is self-referential, disjointed, and irreal, and postmodern in a host of other ways. I will support these claims by referencing Frederick Jameson's Breakdown of the Signifying Chain and Linda Hutchian's Complication of History and Fiction. I argue that Synecdoche wrestles with artistic representation because the play production at the center of the film is unselective of the reality it chooses to portray, resulting in an anti-narrative, depthless film. The play's presence within the film is the first suggestion of its postmodernity. If Caden's goal after receiving the McCarthy grant is to make something realist, he accomplishes this a little too well. Since Caden's play is a convincing, all-encompassing representation of his life, a copy essentially, the play's status as a work of art becomes complicated, and so too does the distinction between art and reality. Linda Hutchian elaborates on this separation between history and fiction in her chapter, historiographic metafiction, the pastime of past time. In a truly postmodern move, Hutchian resigns historicity itself to a product of cultural time and space. Hutchian writes, history, quote, history and fiction are themselves historical terms and their definitions and interrelations are historically determined and vary with time, end quote. In our contemporary postmodern moment then, the boundary between history and fiction is being blurred. Synecdoche performs this troubling of history and fiction. The vastness of Cain's play is the first clue to its complicated status as a work of art. In his attempt to create a play which is realist and mimetic of the world around it, Cain hires a cast which grows so large that it is never entirely shown on screen. Also, when a cast member remarks to Cain that the play needs to finally premiere, and that they have been rehearsing for 17 years, the viewer feels discomfited by the drastic passage of time. The play's vastness is an attempt to mimic life, boundless in its size and length. The diegetic world of the film becomes confused with the world of the play, especially when Caden's life becomes revolved around his play. Hutchian compiles the history versus fiction phenomenon and other postmodern moves under one name, narrativization. She writes, quote, The issue of narrativity encompasses many others that point to the postmodern view that we can only know reality as it is produced and sustained by cultural representations of it." End quote. It seems that Caden desires to create something so realistic and honest that he is uncomfortable leaving out a single detail, so his production keeps accumulating until it is merely mimetic of real life. Caden is struggling with the concept of representation. He will not settle to choose a portion of life to tell a greater truth. To him, this would be too trite. He refuses to let select pieces of reality to stand for the whole. Essentially, he struggles with meaning-making, a theme which appears throughout the film, including during Caden's recurring bouts of psychosis. In this way, the film is skeptical of reality, and, like postmodernism, affirms the belief that, quote, there is no presence, no external truth which verifies or unifies. There is only self-reference, end quote. The film's self-reference is evident in the way the play figures in the film. Even the actors in Caden's play are playing the role of actors from the play. During the middle of the film, Caden gives his crew direction to be aware of their self-referential roles, reminding them that they are, quote-unquote, actors playing actors. The evocation of performance is immediate here. The play's representation of the diegetic world around it elicits a metaphor of life as a performance in which humans are merely actors. It is a very nihilistic philosophy which denies one's self-control and willpower. Kaufman is explicitly playing with this metaphor, which is a consequence of the film's self-referentiality. The self-referentiality of the film also becomes apparent when play scenes become consequential to the diegesis. Scenes in Caden's life, like Claire's decision to quit the play and leave him, are played out and become real through Caden's play. They do not exist outside of it, yet they affect Caden's life just the same. Additionally, actors in the film and the real people in Caden's life become involved with one another, like the actor who plays Caden and one of Caden's lovers, whose relationship eventually ends in the actor's suicide. Their affair could not have existed without the play, 
yet had real consequences in the diegetic world of synecdoche. Here again, the film blurs the line between reality and fiction through Caton's production. Jameson introduces what he calls a crisis in historicity while discussing signification in postmodernism. He uses Lacan's description of schizophrenia as an analogy to postmodern signification, describing it as, quote, a breakdown in the signifying chain, the interlocking syntagmatic series of signifiers which constitutes an utterance or a meaning, end quote. Besides its blatant references to psychosis, Synecdoche portrays breakdowns in the signifying chain during the real-time writing of Olive's diary, the blank pages of the therapist's book, and Caden's diagnosis of psychosis, the kind with the pustules. The viewer gains an irreal or discomforting departure from reality from these scenes. But the more profound signification malfunction in Synecdoche is in the film's narrative structure, or lack thereof. When the plot progresses through the last stages of Caden's life, the film does not end any more more profound than where it began. While Caden undergoes many losses throughout the film, these experiences do not change Caden, change Caden as a character, nor do they add up to any certain message. Yet this is also the aim of Caden's production, not to make something greater out of a smaller part. In this way, as well, the film is very self-reflective. According to Jameson, the breakdown of signification is a result of the loss of historicity in postmodernism. He says, quote, If indeed the subject has lost its capacity actively to extend its protensions and retentions across the temporal manifold and to organize its past and future into coherent experience, it becomes difficult enough to see how the cultural productions of such a subject could result in anything but heaps of fragments, end quote. As time was formerly the organizing mechanism used to connect signifiers, postmodernism's abandonment of historicity leaves these signifiers to remain separated from one another, with no scheme to make sense of them. He says, quote, What we generally call the signified, the meaning or conceptual content of an utterance, is now rather to be seen as a meaning effect, as that objective mirage of signification generated and projected by the relationship of signifiers among themselves. When that relationship breaks down, when the links of the signifying chain snap, then we have schizophrenia in the form of rubble of distinct and unrelated signifiers." End quote. Synecdoche is a rubble of unrelated signifiers in the sense that the events in Cain's life, while they are organized by time, develop into nothing except Cain's eventual death. Cain's life seems cyclical. He marries, has a child, and is abandoned by women twice. He gradually loses each of his loved ones, and he returns to the funeral scene repeatedly, gesturing at this cycle. Yet nothing is gained from each loss. Each one merely follows the last. The film's lack of closure is another feature of anti-narrativity, on which Hutchian elaborates further. Quote, Narrative is what translates knowing into telling, and it is precisely this translation that obsesses postmodern fiction. The conventions of narrative in both historiography and novels, then, are not constraints, but enabling conditions of possibility of sense-making. Their disruption or challenging is bound to upset such basic structuring notions as causality and logic. The refusal to integrate fragments is a refusal of the closure and telos which narrative usually demands." End quote. Jameson describes this lack of a referent in terms of the simulacrum, which he defines as, quote, the identical copy for which no original has ever existed. It seems that Synecdoche is subverting the context which is required for the act of reference. Walter Benjamin adds that in order for a work of art to be original, it needs its context, or, quote, its presence in time and space, its unique existence at the place where it happens to be, end quote. Context is very troubled in Synecdoche since it seems to be representing that which has yet to exist until its materialization through the representation. Since Cain's production and his real life are one and the same, the fact that the play is realist cannot be so, because it has nothing to realistically portray but itself. Jameson discusses the consequences of this type of realism, quote, If there is any realism left here, it is a realism that is meant to derive from the shock of grasping that confinement and of slowly becoming aware of a new and original historical situation in which we are condemned to seek history by way of our own pop images and simulacra of that history, which itself remains forever out of reach." End quote. In Synecdoche, the referent has disappeared, just as it has in Cain's play. 
The film is endlessly self-referencing, as it portrays a play which references the diegesis, which is consumed by the play itself, resulting in a film that is simultaneously realist and irreal, as it constantly returns to either itself or death. Aesthetically, Synecdoche reflects postmodern ideas as well. Firstly, the lighting is non-expressionist. There are no strong highlights or shadows. The images have low contrast, giving them a grayish quality. This lack of vibrance gestures towards the postmodern aesthetic of what Jameson calls the waning of affect, or depthlessness. Postmodernism champions an aesthetic that is not dramatic, but instead subdued, nihilistic, and apathetic. The film's content communicates its affect as well, as Caden is consistently melancholic throughout the film. In conclusion, Synecdoche is a postmodern film that endlessly references itself, creating a cycle which perpetually circles back to death. The film is a chain of signifiers lacking any referent other than themselves. The self-reflexivity combined with the irreality of the film and its subdued postmodern aesthetics makes for a discomforting viewing experience and results in a film that is depressing, heartbreaking, and intriguing. Thank you.